Running away from responsibilities causes more harm than good, especially when a kid's involved. Now, a man denies a kid because he suffers from albinism is heartbreaking. Now, fasten your seatbelt for these mind-blowing cases. These are cases of evil parents on paternity court. I didn't even know that this child was albino, and plus, no one's in my family albino. I have no, no trait of it. Now, Mr. Johnson's in court to prove that he ain't the biological father a little Cadian. Now, he says her accusations is causing trouble for him. Now, she's pretty confident that he's the dad. Mr. Johnson, you are here to prove you are not the biological father of Miss Kirby's 11-month-old son, Caden. You claim her accusations are causing trouble in your relationship, and you are certain the results will clear your name. That correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson says that she's only trying to pin the baby because she needs support. Now, he doesn't acknowledge the baby is his. I don't need she your wanna... help. My baby's well taken care of. He's well, been taken care of for almost a year now. Well, why are you threatening me with child support? Because I know you ain't gonna do nothing. All right, let me ask you this. Mr. Johnson, did you grow up with a father in your life? No, Your Honor. I was premature. I was in the hospital for six months. Yes, Your Honor. And you would never do that to another child? Yes, Your Honor. I would never do that because they made bad wife, decisions. you're not taking care of Caden. Uh, because it's not are. mine. It ain't my baby. Baby looks nothing like Caden. Ba my baby looks like me. Now, she was, uh, you know, taking sausage from another bro, but it wasn't during the time that he was involved with it. So, was having two kids and claiming he doesn't want another one justifying his actions for denying the baby? I don't know. And during the time, she already told me, Your Honor, that she was having sex with another guy. A month before you and a month no, after you, no. sir. No, during, no. During the time we were having sex, she had already told me. You're saying she told you, I'm also having a sexual relationship with somebody else? Yes, Your Honor. What did she say? She was like, well, I'm single, but I'm having sex with this dude also. Uh and plus, he was staying the night at her apartment. Okay. Because he knew from the jump that I was sexual dealing with someone. But maybe if you don't want kids, stop giving chicks your meat. Now, debunking the truth of possible paternity because the baby suffers from albinism is kind of thoughtless. Now, he says none of his family's got albino traits. So, do you feel like that's one of the reasons Mr. Johnson is yes. not believing? Yes. Because of his albinism? Yes. Excuse me, Your Honor. I didn't even know that this child was albino. And plus, no one's in my family albino. Has no, no trait of it. So, you feel like since you've never heard of this, it's not in your family, that... Caden couldn't possibly be your child. That's another area of doubt for you. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Well, Miss Kerb, does anyone in your family have albinism? Do they? No, Your Honor. Any of the other two men, do you know if I'm not sure. it occurs in their family? You don't know. Now, he hasn't been in the baby's life since he was born. Now, he says he doesn't got a connection with a baby either. He tells the court that he hopes the baby ain't his so that he can move on with his family and his life. I mean, that's a little cold, but you know what? Police is honest. Mr. Johnson, what are your hopes today? You say you know Caden's not your biological child, but that's different from what you're hoping. Do you hope he is? I'm hoping that he's not, Your Honor, oh. so I go on with my life. Because you just had a baby. Yes, Your Honor. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Honor. You may have another one in about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, what holds for Miss Kirby and her baby? Watch as the paternity results prove the paternity. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. <laughs> Mr. Ball's in court to seek answers concerning the paternity of a baby. Now, he says that she told him that she couldn't get pregnant. But did she lie about it? Now, she's also been sleeping with other dudes, apparently, too. You say that you were told by the defendant, Ms. Cox, that she could not get pregnant, and now she's claiming for an unpaid loan. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, Mr. Ball, yeah. how did you first hear... Morning, noon, night, we would talk every day, and maybe within uh, the last 90 days of me, you know, serving my time, well, when I got home, I actually bumped into this guy at the grocery store. She claims that a sexual relationship ended prior to sleeping with him and believes that he's the father. Now, he got the information on her cheating with other men from her best friend. Now, the twist of the situation 
was that he also slept with his supposed best friend. That you slept with behind my back. Yes, you did. Not at all. Yes, you did. Not at all. And she got pregnant and, and lied times? to me the whole time she was pregnant that the baby was not his, it was his cousin. But then the baby finally did come back to be his when the baby was like six or seven months old. That's when she finally broke down and told me, and you know what? I was still her friend and I was still there for his child, taking care of his child. Go and get a job. So when I first his... came home, I wasn't looking for a job. When yeah. I was with her, when we were looking for a job, she was sitting right outside the place in a dude. One place. Now, during the time of the birth, he didn't express any doubts of paternity. And Mr. Cox refused signing the birth certificate, but why? Now, he says he wants to make it hard for her with child support. My water broke February 10, 2010, during intercourse with Mr. Ball. And um, he drove me to the hospital. He never expressed to me that he had any doubt at all whatsoever. And when it came down to signing the birth certificate, he wouldn't. And he I never wouldn't. did. He I would wouldn't. not sign the, sign the birth certificate that? because he said he wanted Why to make it hard for child Why support. Why would I tell you I wanted to make it hard for you? And I when I'm there, the, I offered I'm a DNA there, test in the I want to make it hard for you, but yet I'm there. I offered him a DNA test in the hospital. He didn't want it. Oh, I have not. Oh, yeah. Mr. Ball. Yes, I have. He also refused to have DNA done. But why question the paternity of the girl now? Miss Cox's mom looks at him and sees him as an ingrate. Dear Judge Lake, what I especially don't like is how he, and that would be Mr. Ball, has treated my daughter. I really saw his true colors in December of 2011 when he kicked my daughter and grandbaby out in the snow with all their gifts. I'm not being racist, but he knows he can get away with this because these girls are white and more submissive. As she just stated it, that I couldn't get away with it with a black girl. I've had plenty of black girls. And it was intimate a week ago, but he claims that he doesn't want to be with her. And she's also been helping him with child support for his other daughters. Now, he only sees her and her family as a place that he could run to when he needed money. And um, just a few, a few weeks ago, about a month and a half ago, I helped him with money for child support for his other daughter. And this is the basis of your countersuit. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you could help me out with a little money so I don't go to jail when I go to court? If you could help, I'd be grateful and appreciated, but you know I'd pay it all back when I get this money. I'll pay it Amen. back. Thanks again for your help. Now that the result is out, is he gonna be the biological father or not? I don't know, man, let's find out. It has been determined that, Mr. Ball, you are her father. <laughs> is that the news you wanted? Yeah. Now, Ms. Parker and her mams show up in court to sue her husband and also prove paternity of her baby. Now, her husband denies paternity of the kid. He tells them to find the real father and sue him because he's sure that he ain't it. I mean, that's a pretty awful thing to say when paternity hasn't even been proven yet. Miss Bailey, you and your daughter are suing the defendant for 3,600 and he denies paternity of your four month old grandson. You claim he hasn't even given your daughter a single. Yes, Mr. Your Honor. Parker, you say your advice to Miss Bailey and her daughter is to take their lawsuit. Fi Do not believe you are four month old Zechariah's biological father. Ms. Parker says he left her when she was just 16 weeks pregnant and hasn't shown up ever since. Yeah, he dumped all the responsibility on her and her mom and he never even bothered to call and check up. Today, because Mr. Parker has done nothing, not a single thing for my daughter or my grandson. I'm the baby's father. I provide for the baby. I buy the formula and comfort him, not him. I've had the same phone number for... And you claim he left you when you were 16 weeks pregnant? He left me when I was 16 weeks pregnant, 10 days before Christmas. Your Honor. What do you mean? Explain. The last, the last few days there, Your Honor, she told me that I wasn't worth nothing, that I was not allowed to be a part of this family. That's a lie. Now, he says that he's suspicious of her and her activities. He gives unnecessary excuses to prove his claims, like her starting to wear makeup. First it started, she'd start wearing makeup and everything. She was wearing it to church. That was, it ain't so funny. She never wore makeup before. I, I didn't know if she was trying makeup. to get something going with the neighbors or not. Put a lock on your bedroom door? I did. Miss Parker, why? Because all the Christmas presents were in there and I have an eight year old. Going you didn't have anything left in there. Because you threw everything out. Did you lock your husband out too? At that point, I didn't have a clue, ma'am. Now, their marriage has been having ups and downs. Now, he says that the birth certificate didn't have his name as his father, which gives him more doubts than another baby. Now, what were her reasons for it? Now, she gave the baby her maiden name, not his last name. She didn't lie to him. I, I, I didn't lie. They, the hospital, didn't put him on the birth certificate because of the marital problems, because under father's name, it indicates refused, refused, under father's birthplace, refused. That means the mother refused. I gave them 
his name then because why they wouldn't they, put it on there. And why didn't they put it on there? It's legally required. It was also revealed that she'd been collecting money from his mom whenever she needed something for the child. Demanding to file for child custody when you ain't even been present in the baby's life is kind of condescending. My son, they had one car that he bought. Why was he able to buy that car? He was able to buy that car because he claimed me and my child on his... He has no college degree. I'm He's halfway working through on my college degree. Yeah, but I'm halfway through my second. But it don't do no good if you don't work. <laughs> Let's... Now, what lies in store for both parties? Watch as all the drama plays out. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Parker. Yes, you are. You are his father. I told you. Told you. Told you. Now, some cases take a lot of back and forth to get results, and some other ones don't. Now, watch as paternity court reveals the truth in record time in cases where a man accommodates a friend who in turn slept with his girlfriend. Now, these are the quickest cases on paternity court. Patrick, you say five years ago you made a huge mistake by opening your doors to a stranger who needed a place to stay because that man betrayed you and slept with your girlfriend, Miss Pence. Today, you're here to prove that you didn't father Pence's fraternal twins, four-year-olds Larry and Carrie, and the other man did. Is that correct? A man brings a woman who cheated with his friend in court to prove that he's not the father of her two fraternal twins. Now, he accommodated the friend in question and he stayed for about six days, but then he moved out. Question to us, I wonder why he just upped and left. Is it because me and you argue a lot? Okay. You know, time goes on. Me and her sat around and had a few drinks, sitting at home enjoying herself. Well, she doesn't show up until the next day, about 10.30 in the morning. Really? And her, her hair's a wreck. You know, she looked like she went through a, a hurricane or something. Miss so Pence, you got her. missing overnight? I did, Your Honor. Well, why was you gone all night? You know what I mean? What'd you do? Who was you with? And what was her response? So you hadn't slept with him when he was acting? actually living there. No, Your Honor. Wait, did you go looking for him or did you run into it? I kind of went looking for him. Um, Larry had continuously from really? day one accused <laughs> me of cheating constantly. I Mr. Had, Patrick. Yes, Mr. Okay. Patrick. I had never um, slept with anyone else before that you're, night. I had you're constantly. Flirt, you're so flirtatious. I was const it, th that's how I was yeah, brought yeah. up. Never. Uh -huh. You constantly accused me of it and I kept telling you, you're going to keep pushing and keep pushing and it's going to happen. That night it happened. Now she claims it was the biggest mistake that she ever made in her life and regrets ever doing it. Now, unfortunately, she can't go back and change it. Now, all she wants is some closure so that she doesn't got to deal with a constant argument of him accusing her of cheating. Is the date that me and Mr. Patrick had sex, and then on August 7th is the date that the twins were born. That, that don't mean that. That's a five-day window. It does. The doctor had said that the twins were conceived. A five-day window matter, between Mr. what? From the date that she had slept with the other man. Let's be clear. Miss Pence, which day did you sleep with the other man? October 29th was the date that I had slept. Oh! Yeah, we need to have that circle on the calendar as well. How can you definitively say it was the November said, 2nd? The doctor said that November 2nd was right around the date that I had conceived. What was it? They gave you a date or a window? It was a window of a couple of days, the first couple of days in November. So there's no way possible that it could be the other guys if it was the first couple of days in November. How is that possible? That was a, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yes, it is, but it never happened more than the one time. Now, it appears that he had additional doubts, which are specifically about Larry. Now, he believes that he's got ADHD and that doesn't run in his family. So where could that have come from? Now, the court invited a board-certified child and adolescent psychiatrist to shed more light on the health issue. They can be, but it's a much more complicated picture than that, and that's not the entire story. So sometimes we can point to one gene, sometimes it's multiple genes, and sometimes it's the way that the genes interact with the environment, and sometimes the genes have nothing to do with it, and it's just something that happened during the pregnancy or during the delivery or in that child's early childhood um, that can affect how they learn, where the genes had nothing to do with it, and it's things that the child was exposed to later. What are the chances that one twin may have a learning disability, but the other does not? Twins, if they're fraternal twins, which is this case yes, here, they are. Um, are no more closely related than any other sibling pair when it's fraternal twin. And so you definitely could have one in one child and not in the other child, even though they have the same two parents. Okay. Thank you so much for your testimony. It's been very enlightening. I'll have Jerome escort you out. We don't want to take up too much more of your time, but thank you, doctor, thank for you. coming. So does that change your opinion now that you've heard the testimony of the doc? Possibility, you know what I mean? It could be passed down. So what you're yeah. saying, what you heard further supports your testimony. Now the result comes back and the kids turn out to be his, which he hopes is the case, then it'd be pretty hard for him to trust her again. But we gotta admit that he's got a valid point. So the stakes are pretty high at this point and their relationship is really riding on the result. 
like I said, if it does come back, which I hope they do, I will apologize to you. But if not, it's something I'm gonna have to ponder on for a while whether I'm gonna continue to stay. We're gonna get to the paternity result shortly. But first, I'd like to give you the results of the lie detector test you requested. Well, Jerome? There's nothing. <laughs> This here's gonna determine our fate. During the last 10 years of your relationship with Mr. Patrick, have you had sexual contact with any other man other than the man whom you admitted to cheating with? Yes, Your Honor. You said no. The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. How is that? The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. That's not, Your Honor, that's not possible. I slept with I, the guy I, one I, time. I knew it. You one time, Your Honor. My back. No, Mr. Patrick, I did it. It was one time. It never happened other than that time. <laughs> What that paper says. I don't care what so, that paper says. Well, I guess it's time we find out the lie detector was just not in her favor or if she was actually not telling the truth. Mr. Patrick, you are the father. I told you that you were the father. I told you. <laughs> a woman and her brother are suing the parents for a paternity test. Now, she claimed just two weeks ago that they dropped a bomb on her during an argument. Now, sadly, in the heat of the moment, they inadvertently revealed that it was possible that their dad is not their biological father. Your Honor, I have to say this. It's, it's, it's been longer than two weeks ago, it's just that this argument sort of brought everything out. And Your when Honor. you heard that, immediately you felt, I was in shock. I was just like, uh, how you just gonna fight the argument? How you just gonna leave without saying bye, huh? You understand what I'm saying? I, I do know. understand what you're saying. Yeah, I know. Mr. Hunt, you'd like to add something? This as well. Yes, I did. Me, me and my friends, actually. And I was just sitting there like, whoa. Like. It was, we were having a get together. Everybody was at the house. And you know, I'm the stronger one. Even though I'm the little sister, I act like the big sister. But for him to make that statement was just ridiculous. This is the only man that I know for all my life. He's been there for my kindergarten graduation, my sixth grade graduation. How many men do you know sit in a delivery room with their daughter when they're having a baby? Now that's a whole lot of messy questions to answer. Now it appears as if there was some dude named Tommy that the whole neighborhood was talking about that she was supposed to be dealing with and her grandmother had also once said that she looked like this dude. Now she denied looking like Tommy. Now despite all of these things, Ms. Razor never doubted the fact that Mr. Jacobs was her dad. We're here with Ms. Razor, and you agreed to take a DNA test. Yes, I was, also, I was at that cookout. Right, you so said that this was your friend. Just that, one second, Ms. Razor. I'm sorry, Mr. Farmer, so, were you intimate with Mr. Farmer? Nasty. Is what he's saying? That's yes, Uncle Tommy. That's just nasty. No, There's a no, possibility I no. could be your father. Jerome, would you please go check on Ms. Razor? Certainly. Do you see what you did? Do you see That's what you crazy. did? Just this whole thing tears the whole family him? apart. You sleeping with him? Some 26 years ago. Yeah. That's Around right. the time Precious was conceived, he could only be Ms. Razor's father. Yes. Okay. Ms. So Razor, he, thank he you for that joining. So my son. This is a lot to take in. I mean, having to find out a man you've always believed in to be your uncle might possibly be your dad's kind of crazy. Now, her frustration is pretty valid. Now, before the results are revealed, Mr. Jacobs made it clear that regardless of what the results turn out to be, they his kids and they're going to respect him and their mom. He and their mother, and they're gonna the whole me. time. It's okay. And I was going to get married in January. And I don't want to go down that aisle living a lot. After that argument that they had, I didn't know that it was going to be this big. I just want to know who is my father for real. And he's still going to walk me down this aisle in January. But I haven't opened up to my fiance the way, I'm, the way I should. Because I don't know who I am inside no more. And I don't know why. I just want to get to the bottom of it. I mean, that's a relief, but let's find out whether or not Mr. Jacob is her father. Now, hopefully he is, so she can at least be happy on the day she gets married. In the case of Razor Hunt versus Jacob Hammond, as it pertains to 26-year-old Fresh Razor, Mr. Jacobs, you are the father. You are the father. Are not. No! <laughs> her father. No. And that's an amazing dude right there. So without further delay, it's time to find out who fathered Mr. Hunt. Razor Hunt versus Jacobs Hammond. As it pertains to 33-year-old Hector Hunt, Mr. Jacobs, you are not Hector's father. Oh, oh you is scandalous. 
A 39-year-old Lithuania Georgia mom who feels her time's running out brings her 20-year-old son to court to prove that her former lover is his father. Now he admits to being a former ladies man but claims there ain't no way he fathered this kid. It was infatuation. I was never in love with him. You weren't? No. So I it was never. just infatuation. Yeah. So the bottom line, you all did have a sexual relationship, right? Yes, we, we did. We so, Mr. A... Figures, you acknowledge that, right? Yes, ma'am. You did. I definitely know it wasn't just me. Right. So, right, we could go out and pick a spot and get to know each other, you know, per okay. se. So that's what we did one night. And at the time, you know, when you're younger, sometimes people change their names. And she got a good memory. <laughs> so. This testimony is going real well, as we know they're on the same page. Okay. Well, Go ahead. So, now I admit I didn't stop because we was in the middle of having. But. It's lying. But. It is so lying. Really? Mm -hmm. And to this day, she'll say she doesn't remember that. I wonder how awkward that's got to be. Like, when she found out that she was pregnant, she thought she had a stomach virus, so she went to the doc. Now, they gave her a pregnancy test, and she was shocked that Mr. Figures claimed that she had another guy she was dealing with at the time. Dealing with someone, meaning he had my back. Don't meaning we having sex. Come on, it, man. It, don't, it didn't come to... But the person that he's talking about, mm -hmm. he even went to him and told him, you know she's carrying my baby. See what I'm saying? Mr. Figures, so, so you admitted that... You I, know she carrying my baby. No, yeah, I went to him Because and when and he... Said, that later on that day, he came to me what and was I like, I said to him, Why is do your... you know that this is what she's saying? Your he Honor, said, he said he, yeah, him... but at the same time, they're supposed to be dealing with each other. Then he comes yeah. back and says, well, he, yeah. he's going to take care of a child or, or, you know. So how can you say, how, how can you, how, how do I know that? Till this day, it's still in, my life. in the picture. Okay, we we didn't have good. sex. It's just, can I and say that this, he, he, Mr. Uh, Casanova, I want to give Mr. Wanna... Figures a chance to respond. From my perspective of things. Now, she's got other kids and they dads come to pick him up and take him places. But he ain't got nobody, and it's always been him and her. Now, honestly, it's a little sad. Now, she's scared and concerned that he'd be alone and had nowhere to go she ups and dies. It's been eating me for 20 years that I have this man. I have, I mean, I got you in the palm of my hand. Like, I got your social security number. Why is it taking the state of Georgia 20 years to even get a swipe his mouth? Yeah, and that wasn't my fault. Oh, I mean, I'm not, and I I'm never, not blaming you him. You ain't never taken the initiative I, to do anything. I, like I said, if I didn't know how to get in touch with you, how can I? I may have so many you, social media networks that you can find anybody here. I'm not, so I'm not. That's excuse. You can you're not sound, you're not sound you like can no man right now. Name? You're not you sound like a man right name? now. You're not sound like a man really? right now. You're not you sound like a man. Without a name? Yes. I don't you can know find anything, anything with a name. Okay, okay. I don't know but look, look, hold on, Mr. Mr. Figures, are you suggesting that you did not know Miss Jackson's last name I did not and you didn't even name. know your own potential son's name? I did not. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. Well, hey, sometimes the truth may sound like that to you when you're confused. Now, he sure doesn't deserve this and it's completely unfair to him. Now, he believes that it's a blessing in disguise to him because it made him and his mom more closer and that's all that matters. Wow. Hey. Wow. <laughs> and tell me what else is in this book. My, uh, his other siblings, just him, the first day he was born. They... So these are all monumental moments in Daniil's life, things that Graduation. his father has missed. All of that stuff is on Facebook. Him walking across that stage and getting that diploma, I did it myself. He ain't never been arrested. And come fall, my baby going to college. And so you brought this book here today for Mr. Figures no, because it, these are the things and the moments he's missed. You got Ron, to start first. saying that to Mr. Figures. Mr. Figures, I can see you now and I see I see emotion in your eyes and I appreciate that. And I, I, he should know. You know, I, I don't want to take that from him, especially any longer. It has been a while. You know what? After 20 years of waiting, I think it's time that we find out whether or not he is the dad. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Figures, you are not the father. It's a fact that being a parent ain't easy, but the bare minimum for a parent is to be there emotionally for their kids. Now, unfortunately, not many of these parents reach this standard. Watch this young woman break down crying as she confronts her mom for never taking the time to confirm her paternity before she became an adult. These are the most cruel cases on paternity court. 
Now, there's a lot at stake for this young woman who's been skeptical about her fraternity. Now, she lunged forward to discover the truth, bringing her mom and her father to court. You're here today suing your mother for $2,200 for emotional distress. You say she's caused you by not knowing who your biological father is. Yes, now, the mom. court has located one possible father and must determine if there is enough evidence to order a paternity test. Ms. Brown Overstreet, you admit to making mistakes as a mother, but claim you shouldn't be held accountable in court for your daughter's pain. Yes, Your Honor. You hope there's enough evidence presented today to prove that the man in court today is your daughter's biological biological father. Yes, Your Honor. The man Clifton Smith, who's in our court today, has not been tested yet. No, Your Honor. I never knew who could be my father. I didn't know who he could be. I didn't know who he was. I was in and out of foster care on three different occasions. Um, foster care wasn't so good, you know. I had four brothers and a sister. I didn't know where they were. They got split up, too. My grandmother got us back. She got sick. I missed three months of school. Got kicked out. I was in alternative school. I got kicked out because my grandma got sick and I had to take care of her. Well, that's an unconventional way of making someone aware of something, especially a kid. Now, she single-handedly almost ruined his relationship over a matter that should have been resolved 20 years ago. Ms. Brown Overstreet, how does it feel to hear your daughter speak with such pain in her heart? I mean, it's difficult to even say to another mother that your daughter blames you. I feel like my daughter hates me because of the fact that I wasn't always there and I didn't have a handbook on how to be a parent. I had my kids young and it was six, I have six of them. So it wasn't like it was just one child. I had a hard time trying to be a mother. I didn't know how to raise my kids and when I lost custody of them, I tried my best to get them back and I kind of gave up on myself. I can admit that I was young and I was wild and I I was kind of promiscuous, so I did not know who her father was. Did you approach any of those men and say, I'm pregnant, I think you're the father, or you just left them all alone? I just left them all alone. So, Miss Brown, please tell the court, what was life like without a father, growing up without a father in your life? Your Honor, it was hard. I mean, I can barely sit up and describe how hard my life has been. Not only without a father, without my mom. Now, we may not believe the mother or the father, but the kid's gonna have the best memories of these important moments. Now, the ugly part about all of this is the defendant's broken sense of accountability and morality. I had gave up on myself, so I didn't even know what she was going through. Well, when you have kids, sometimes you have to give up on yourself to do for your children. I understand that. I'm sorry. Did you hear your mother say she was sorry? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe that she is? Somewhat I do. Man, the poor girl's been through the whole foster care system, and her mom's here bragging about what a good job she done. Like, okay, Sheila. That woman needs to get a reality check and cash it, man. Now, her daughter's living through confusion. So I ask my mom when I get off work, I say, it's this guy that came up to my job, Mr. Smith. I told her his name. She said, oh, oh yeah, that might be, that, that, it's a possibility that he's your dad. Now, I'm 18 now, I'm grown. Why are you just now telling me that it's a possibility that he could be my father? So, were you angry with your mother that she hadn't ever mentioned Mr. Smith's name? Or were you angry with Mr. Smith? If I have a child out there, I want to know. So when I pulled up, I get out the car and my cousin pointed her out. So I was looking at her and so she came up and I said something to her first and she was smiling at me like I'm like, like, like I'm trying to flirt with her or something. So I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, hold up here. I might be your father. You busy trying to flirt with me. Right. You know, cut it out right there. And you are hopeful. I'm, you truly are hopeful. I love her already. Aww. Even if we get the results, her mom ain't never gonna change her ways, man. But with all the finger pointing and the blaming everybody but herself. You've reviewed the evidence in this case. Yes. Mr. Smith contends that he had a serious injury and the doctor told him he may not be able to have children because of this. We are trying to determine whether it's even appropriate to order a DNA test. Can you shed light on the likelihood and the injury? I believe I can. It's absolutely pos possible, in my opinion, for Mr. Smith uh, or someone with a testicular injury such as him to father a child. Nature often gives us two of what's important. And here's why. On average, a man releases anywhere between 50 million and a billion sperm at a time. So if one testicle isn't functioning, you can cut that number in half to say 25 million. Fertility doesn't become an issue until that number drops below 10 million. So based on the numbers, it's definitely possible for someone with a testicular injury to still father a child as long as the swimmers are normal and healthy. This has clearly been going on for far too long and she deserves to know the truth are not Chantia's father.
I'm sorry. Ms. Brown, you okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. How about you, Mr. Smith? I know you had hopes. Yeah, so I still love her. It's cool. So you still my baby, right? You know I love you. After sustaining a severe groin injury while trying to fold a futon, a man comes to court unsure if it's possible for him to be the father of a 22. Kind of crazy, man. But what's crazier is that she'd grown up without parental support at all. Oh, I don't have. They didn't get it done. Should have got it done when he came back into my life when I was 10. And that's a pretty interesting confirmation from both the mother and the potential father, and somehow both discredit him as a dad. I gotta go through this. Y'all hurt my feelings, for real, mom. Well, I apologize. Now, life, it, it comes with up and downs, and it comes with hurt. Um, as far as I'm concerned, a great job or a good job as best as I could I for my ability. I understand, mom, but when you say you gotta play the mom and Chanel do my I job love her. and try to make sure her and that you don't miss first, out first on other baby. stuff. Okay, the, the, let, me, let me say this. Now, the tests were done, and it's time to check the results and give this young woman some closure. As it pertains to Miss. Chanel Craig, Miss Craig, Mr. Thompson is not your father. The lady comes up to confront the man that she knows as her dad after he disappeared on her 20 years ago. Miss Jackson. Yes, Your Honor. You say you've always known Mr. Hightower is your father. Mr. Hightower? Yes, ma'am. Did you have a relationship with Ms. Jackson's mother? Yes, I did. Tell the court about the nature of your relationship. Me and her mother uh, had a relation and we was intimate for like about six months, uh, about 35, 40 times. Um, after that, kind of broke off after that. Okay. That I'm not the father. We did, um, you know, I asked her a couple of times if we could have a paternity test, and that didn't fall through. And so there's been a question of paternity in your mind from the beginning. Yes, ma'am. So much so that you even requested a DNA test. Yes, ma'am. But unfortunately, it was never administered. No. That makes sense. He offered a paternity test and she took it as a challenge to her integrity and chose to reject the offer and that was enough for him to say adios and never look back. She told me that I was the father. She did? Yes, sir. Can I say something? Yes, you may, Miss Jack. Um, actually, he was going to the doctor's appointment to my mom, too. You were? Yeah. Never happened. I, yeah, I don't know why her mom would tell her that. I don't but think she lied to me. I never, ever. Um, she told me that him and her, they weren't really in an actual relationship, but they did mess around quite a lot, and that um, he couldn't um, tell everybody else that him and her was in relations or messing around. But at the end of the day, she knew definitively that he was your biological father. Correct. Mr. Hightower. I thought, you know, well, maybe it's a possibility. So at that time, I went and picked her up me and uh, Miss Hightower picked her up. Then we took her to the mall, went to the mall. So at that point, I just left it like that. I don't remember him picking me up and taking me to the mall. I remember my mom taking me to the mall, and I do remember her. The lady. He claims that he doesn't recall, which honestly just sounds like a lie, because what kids remember the most is the hurt. They never forget the pain, and it's got to have been pretty painful for her to remember it to the day. Children remember those things, and I see that that. What are you feeling, Brittany? <laughs> I'm mad because I shouldn't even have to go through all this, you know? It shouldn't have been 20 years later that you decided to come and find me. If you believe that I was your daughter, then you would have put in the effort to get the DNA test to find out and not miss parts of my life. And what was it like growing up without? I mean, um, I, I was always Honor, loved, you know? Your Honor, I tried several occasions to go and get the DNA test, but her mother never followed through with the DNA. So I have a total of 14 kids, and all my kids, and all my kids know each other. So there would be no reason for me not to do the same with her. Now, I understand his standpoint, and he tried to rectify himself by asking her for DNA before they can move forward. And what else did you feel, Brittany? Like a sense of relief, because I finally got to talk to him, and I haven't, you know, talked to him or seen him ever since I was younger. This man that everyone has said is your biological father, and you've been confused about where he is, why he wasn't in your life. What would you like to say to him right now? I've always lived in Sacramento. I never went anywhere else. Why didn't you try harder? That's a question, Mr. Hightower. Dude, uh, like I said, I was going through things in my life that I needed to take care of me before I can take care of uh, another child. I feel that her mom would have put forth that effort in the beginning to go through with the DNA, especially when I'm telling her that I'll pay for the DNA test. There ain't no doubt that it started, except for the fact that her mom was involved with a bunch of other dudes. When it comes to 24-year-old Brittany 
Jackson, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Hightower, you are not the father. He's unfortunately not your biological father after all. Can I give her a hug? No, thank you. Oh. You're just not ready, but that was, right. that was lovely. This is very difficult. I thank you for attempting to support this beautiful young woman. And it's not over. It's not completely behind her yet, but we at least have gotten to one step in the truth. And I let him stomp on me and do it all. And I still just take the punches and still love him. If I had their pictures right here, I could probably make so, it rain with the possibilities. He told me that he was basically this big, rich person from Hollywood. I ain't never said that he had a big house on Oh, boy, oh, boy. Hold on to your pants, ladies and gents. This one's a rough one. Why, you ask? Because a woman had revenge sex to get back at her cheating husband, and he won't accept her daughter until a DNA test proves that he's the dad. She stated that she was fooled by his lies and empty promises, and all she wanted from him was to take up his responsibilities. In the beginning, you know, everything was cool, she was nice, but then to come to find out she's very conniving, bossy, insecure, all of the above. So you say you feel like a fool. So they met through a friend who introduced them at a club that they both went to, which is always how every great relationship story starts, am I right? And somehow they got married. She admitted she cheated because he cheated on her first. Cause hey, look, if we follow the principle of an eye for an eye, everybody in the world would be blind. Just saying. Yeah, anyway. On his birthday, there was a party, but he didn't invite her because he wanted to enjoy it himself. That's kind of cold, bro. Okay, she also had another party she planned on going to regardless of his birthday, so she can't really complain. I called her phone and he answered her you phone and said, I'm chilling with my baby. What? That's exactly That's what he said. Judge, how he found out is when we came home that Sunday, I told him when we got into it, I can't remember what the argument was about. I said, okay, that's why I had an affair with. Okay, his doubts are valid. She shouldn't have said that to him. I'm not sure what she was trying to insinuate, but she told the court that she slept with the other guy with protection, but didn't with Mr. Pebbles. When I was seven, I had a dog named Mr. Pebbles. I wonder if they're related. Anyway, moving on. So that wasn't the only time she slept with the other guy. It apparently happened again one week after that. So when you find out you're pregnant, who do you tell? Of course, my husband, Mr. Peebles. So you tell him. And when you find this out, Mr. Peebles, what is your reaction? My, my reaction was, you know, I'm super excited. This is this gonna be my first child. Mm. You know? Like every season finale of The Flash ever, the timelines just weren't adding up for him, so he got to thinking. They'd been together for two years, sleeping unprotected, and she never got pregnant. But she goes outside the relationship, comes back, and now she's got a bun in the oven. Something is definitely wrong somewhere. It appears that there was more than one guy she was sleeping with, according to Mr. Pebbles. You're married to Mr. Peebles, but you had another man paying your bills and taking care of you? How, Multiple. How, how else was he getting taken care of? Multiple. Oh! I wasn't going to keep on using my money. Oh, hey, look at that. Mr. Pebbles isn't innocent either. Who thought? This guy's got a baby due two weeks before he and Miss Pebbles' child, and he still talks to the woman in question. She never sees him, and when she calls his phone, she's on the block list. He told the court that she put trackers on his phone and then cut the phone off. Well, she's paying for it now because he used to have a job, but then he quit. And now she takes care of everything, including him. Real winner, right? Yeah, you taking care of me. How? You still around? You getting money from me? I take care of myself. How are you doing with no so, job? Mr. Peebles, did you get another woman pregnant? Yeah, I, I actually did. At the did, same you know, time as your wife? I actually, we went our separate ways. Legally, they were still together. He'd moved in with his best friend, then ended up meeting the other woman. They got intimate, started spending nights together, and then they moved in. All of this was happening while he and Mrs. Pebbles were still married. But holy cow, it just keeps on getting worse. Miss Pebbles seems to be pregnant with another child and she doesn't even know who the daddy is. Like there's any resemblance? I don't know how to, to really 
look into and see if she looked like me or any of that, the features and all that. I can't see none of that. I don't even look at it like that. I can't, I really don't. The other guy she slept with knew she was pregnant, but when he looked at the child, he immediately said the child wasn't his. She doesn't want to lose her family, but with the other baby involved, things might not work out, you think? If the child turns out to be his, he told the court that he then might be interested in making the marriage of family work. They're basically just going in a vicious cycle at this point, so let's check out the results. Case of Peebles versus Peebles. When it comes to 20-month-old, Amira has been determined by this court. Mr. Peebles, you are the father. <laughs> At this point, the foundation of their marriage is pretty much destroyed, so it's up to them to decide whether they want to fix it or watch it crumble away. On to our next case. It's time for another episode of Wheel of the Ho. All right, so grab your popcorn because this one is going to be a ride. A woman needs a paternity test, okay, to determine if her murdered brother, all right, fathered three babies by three different women. Woo In October 2011, uh, my father called me with a very devastating phone call. He told me that my older brother, Quadravius, had been shot. On my way to the hospital, I got a phone call from my younger sister, and she told me that. Throughout the years, these women have been popping up, claiming that her brother fathered their kids. Starting with Miss Robs, she'd met the deceased six years ago on the train, they stayed together, but he was constantly cheating on her. She got tired like they do and went to spend the night at her ex's, and she cheated with him. She found out she was pregnant, and she told her ex that it was his because the deceased was incarcerated. Yikes. And she named her after the ex, so... How are we so to you're not sure if her daughter is your brother's child at all? No, ma'am. And is this true, Ms. Robs? You named the baby after the ex. Miss Webb revealed that she was dating the deceased when he passed away. They were neighbors when they met, and he'd come over to her house, and he'd spend the night and also play with her kids. One of her children's fathers was coming by to see his son. She asked the deceased to stay, but he said he was going home. He went home, but he was on the street with binoculars. Now, that's either really sweet or really creepy. I ended up pregnant once I moved in with GQ, but that's what they thought I slept with my baby daddy, so, you know. That's where the doubt came from. Yeah. yeah. That's where it was a rumor um, in Toss Up. So in the streets, the rumor was she slept with her she baby daddy. She slept with him. Miss Gibson, or as we're going to refer to her now, uh, number three of three, stated that she just found out about Miss Rose's daughter three weeks ago because GQ never told them anything about her. Miss Rose told the court that she was in a relationship with someone else besides GQ during the time of conception. They weren't supposed to be intimate, but it happened anyway. The boyfriend had contacted Miss Gibson on Facebook. And he had no idea that there was a different po a possibility of him not being the father. So that got me feeling some type of way. So I started doing my own little research and digging on my own. Uh-huh. And I found out that um, there could be not one, not two, not three, but four different other baby daddies. It appears that Mrs. Rose's daughter is the only one she questions most in her heart. Let's clear the air and find out if the deceased really fathered these kids. It's time for the results. Ms. Robs, when it comes to two-year-old Brianna, it has been determined that Mr. Gibson is her father. <laughs> it's sad knowing that her child doesn't have a father, so let's check out the results relating to Miss Webb. It has been determined that Mr. Gibson is her father. Well, this has been going well so far. Let's check out the final result relating to Ms. Rose. One year old Zalela. It has been determined that Mr. Gibson is her father. <gasps> Go that went better than I expected. I do feel sorry for them, but it's always gonna hurt and you just gotta find a way to live with it. 
Onward to the next case. Okay, hold on tight because this next one sounds like it should be a title of an Iron Maiden album. Alright, so we got a man returning to paternity court to find out if he's the biological father of an eighth child by a fifth woman. Miss Smith admitted she cheated on him, but she believes it was before she got pregnant. I met her on the website. You know, I was looking for love and um, I went to a website and um, I ran into ran into Crystal. You know, four or five months into it, you're getting suspicious about certain things. You know, she gave me her voicemail and I hear- She stated that she'd given him her password because she wasn't doing anything. She also mentioned that he also had girls leaving him voicemails and calling him. According to Mr. Scott, she wasn't supposed to get voicemails like that if she had a man. Not justifying what she did, but why is it okay for him to get voicemails but not for her? That's kind of a really bad double standard. Is he honest with you about how many children he had? No, he was not. Yes, I was. I don't no, lie about not. my kids. I only thought so that he had five. you didn't know that Mr. Scott had two three-year-olds, two six-year-olds, no, a seven-year-old, a 12-year-old, and a 13-year-old. So they were talking online for about eight months. They made arrangements to meet, and they also made a mutual agreement that they were each going to pay for half of it. She stated that she paid for his whole trip to come and see her the first time, but he disagreed, saying he paid for his own ticket to get there, although she paid for him to come back. So, Ms. Kalan, you find out you're pregnant. Uh huh. And then what? Um, he was uh, happy. He said, was, yeah, uh, quote I, unquote, oh, mommy, we're going to be a family. Your Honor, when he came so, to Michigan, he was calling me mommy. That's what we agreed and on. That's what I mean. His, I mean, his that was a great when he got to Michigan, she didn't greet him at all. She took him to her family, and everybody greeted him with love. They went to where she worked. They all got talking, but there was a particular guy that didn't say a word or even look at him. When they were back to the room, this guy sent her a text, and she deleted it. That's a pretty suspicious. First cousin, look, I promise you, I'm not gonna leave you. Just tell me what happened. She told me I had sex with him, but it didn't last that long. That's what she said. And then she told me she has, I had sex with him once. She admitted cheating on him once, but it only takes one time. He then asked her for the guy's number. She hesitated for a while, but he eventually got it. So he called him and asked him if he'd slept with his girl. He said he did, but never meant for it to happen. That was the same thing she said. Could she have coached him into saying that? Who knows? I did that cheating with him, he pretty much disappeared on me. I didn't, disappear. I didn't talk I to him for a long. I came back in October. Pregnancy. Came back in the and that's when I started talking to other women and she knew about it. Okay, so at some point you discovered you're pregnant. Yes. And you let Mr. Scott so she revealed that she had an IUD in, but she'd removed it intentionally to get pregnant because they planned the baby. Oh boy. So why then did he now deny the baby and disappear? Why start something you can't finish? He denied disappearing, but she stated that she made a post on Facebook about finding out she was having a baby. Apparently, he deactivated his entire Facebook two seconds later. Once I told him I was pregnant, we fought for about another month afterwards, and then he changed his phone number on me, his Facebook, everything. He changed everything on me. I didn't I talk change. to Marcel until address. I was like I have the same address. eight or nine months. I had sent you pictures. Because you I told never received me to. He denied receiving the pictures. It appears that his girlfriend had told her his mom once told him he had a letter, which was the baby's ultrasound, but he asked her to throw it away. Miss Smith's witness, Miss Linsky, said he was a deadbeat. She explained that she had offered for them to stay at her house until they were in Michigan so they didn't have to spend any money. Oh, I got this. I'll pay for the hotel. Well, it turns around, Crystal paid for the hotel. He would not let Crystal leave the hotel. We had family cookout so that he could get to know the family. And oh no, he didn't want to go. He wanted to stay in the hotel. It's pretty clear she paid for everything. She also brought receipts outlining what she paid. She has a receipt for a round trip bus ticket from Palmdale, California to Flint, Michigan, which was $498. There's also hotel expenses for $461 and a one-way return flight from Detroit, Michigan to Burbank, California, for $131 and a hotel for $410. That's a total of about 1,500 bucks. Well, if I knew all this was gonna come down, then I would've prepared myself a little more. You should've prepared yourself. But you it don't even matter, because I don't even need Mr. no documents. Scott, you're I don't in need court. Documents. This is your third time. You're Who comes to court to prove they're right without receipts? I mean, for somebody that's been to court three times for the same reason, he should've come prepared.
They both affirmed that they had a mutual agreement that they were going to pay for half of the expenses, but there's really no evidence that he contributed to anything. Judge Lauren ruled for the defendant on the counterclaim in the amount of $684.50 that he owes her. Well, I want to counter back. for no, no. all my pain Mr. and Stop. Mr. Stop. Stop talking. Crazy. You're not going to talk your way out of this. You talked your way into the debt. You're not wow. going to talk your way out of owing it. Wow. If he knew he wasn't going to be able to deal with all of this, why not stick to the four women he's already got? If not greed, I don't even know what to call this. Just craziness? Absolute insanity? I don't know. Anyway, it's time for the results. Ace of Scott versus Smith. As it pertains to three-month-old... Honesty Smith. Mr. Scott, you are her father. Told you. couldn't keep their legs closed. Take care of your baby. She was multitasking. No, I was not. <laughs> you probably were multitasking. Bad person, go get child support. When we went to child, for child support, I would've got a DNA test. And this was a detector test. To you took a lie detector test? To show you that I'm not lying and that I'm telling the truth. Oh, this one's gonna be fun. Okay, a woman's in court with her parents to prove that the man she knows as her dad is her biological father. The father, on the other hand, is, according to him, 1,000% sure that he did not father this child. So let's get into it. Yeah. You say you've always known the defendant was your father and his denial has crushed you. Once you prove that he is your dad, you hope he will finally accept you. According to Miss La Angela and her mother, Mr. Rollins never for once acknowledged that she was his daughter and it's been really hurtful for her because her mom has always told her that she was his daughter. So she was rejected by the man she knows to be her dad. I wonder why he firmly believes that she's not his daughter though. I get the feeling there's a little bit of dirt here. So let's start digging. You know, it affected me real bad. Like I feel like that he wasn't responsible to even say I'm his daughter or not. And so for 24 years, you've had to deal with this. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, that's a conversation. I bet that must have been really hard for Miss LaAngela because she wouldn't think that her mother would lie to her about something like that. All she wanted to do was to have a conversation with her dad, but he didn't accept her. Pretty sure he's got his reasons, though. A uh, doobie here in neighbors, like, he came out, he was like, well, this means... So I asked him, I was like, well, are you my father? He was like, he was like well, no. No, I'm not your father. Okay, that's just wrong. Even if he is sure that he's not her father, he doesn't have to be a prick about it or talk to her like that. Like, where's your sense of empathy, my dude? How would you feel in that situation? I never switched the story. Okay. Are you a DNA tester? You don't... No, what you not... No, you're not gonna prosecute her because you don't have no law degree. Like you're, you're not a prosecutor. <laughs> I like this guy. He believes that Miss LaAngela's mother was with other men, you know, sexually during the time they were together. Uh, the way he said it, though, is pretty funny. Check it out. The thing I could do is verbally tell you. Verbally state that it. She was, had multiple parts. She was multitasking. No, I was not. <laughs> you probably were multitasking. I know I would. You're saying in a polite way she was having sex with more than one man. The mother denies being with multiple men at the same time. Like, you know, finger cuffs. She said she only had one boyfriend whom she'd broken up with days. Days, not weeks, not months, not years, but days, probably minutes, before she was sexually involved with Mr. Rollins. But who's really telling the truth between the two of them here? I had one boyfriend, and me and him had broke up when I had a two-night stand with Mr. Rollins over there, and that's the only one. And when it, when it came to his test, he was not the father, so I know he's the father. Okay. I'm 100% So that. you've already had the other man tested? Yes. Well, I mean, if other episodes on Paternity Court are to be the judge, she's guilty. Okay, it's clear that Miss LaAngela has been really desperate for the truth for a really long time. She even went as far as asking Mr. Rollins to bring a home DNA test to her son's party so that they could both find out the truth. They later figured out, though, that they couldn't use it then. When it comes to my baby's first birthday, he was like, yeah. So he came, he brought a, a home DNA test. We didn't know how to use it, so... He brought a home DNA test to your baby's first birthday? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's because I was asked to bring it. Who asked you to bring it? 
According to Mr. Rollins, there are certain features that Miss LaAngela has that's similar to one of the men that her mother was, you know, borking at the time. He also added that he saw her when she was with another man and that after screwing the dude's brains out, the man would tell him how much he enjoyed it. Okay, who? that's a thing. I ain't no way for a I'll minute, beat it. When I come back, I thought two dogs back there fighting or something. <laughs> that was them rolling around in Bermuda grass. Oh, oh baby, Good you got to be messed up. I don't think that was me. You probably been somebody you was with. <laughs> no, ma'am. Well, that's kind of a buzzkill, and it's super sad, but at least they all know now. And that hug that Mr. Rollins gave Miss Angela, it was also pretty wholesome. Now, by the way, what on earth is the mother talking about not sleeping with anybody else? She should know, just, just shut her mouth at this point in time. Like, sorry lady, <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. I never noticed that. Beautiful picture. Mm. <laughs> Are you yeah. saying you see a resemblance now? I mean, yeah, with, with, with the uh, makeup and everything on, I, I noticed that now. You see it. Uh, okay, so Mr. Rollins is starting to see a resemblance between Miss LaAngela and his late mother. Interesting. He genuinely tells the court that he did not notice the resemblance before. I mean, that makes sense. Guess he didn't think to check pictures of his mom for any similarities. Anyway, <laughs> it's time for those results. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Rollins, you are not the father. <laughs> Miss Angela's mother needs to stop lying to her kid and really help her to figure out who the hell might be her actual father. She owes her at least that much. Moving on to the next case. Miss Allen's at court to prove that Mr. Childs is the biological daddy of her daughter, Miss Baylor. She believes that she got preggers after she had a brief affair with Mr. Childs. So let's take a look at this. Affair with Mr. Childs, you discovered you were pregnant with your daughter, Ms. Baylor. You say Mr. Childs acknowledged paternity until his wife convinced him otherwise. <laughs> oh, gee mini Christmas that escalated quick. Miss Allen says that the reason why Mr. Childs is denying that Miss Baylor is his kid is because of his wife. Or as she says, his pretty wife. Ooh, chiclet, jealousy is a color that does not suit you well. All right, but why would Mr. Childs deny this just because of his wife? Doesn't he have a mind of his own? Why is Mr. Childs denying your daughter? Um, his his petty wife. Oh, She's been doing me. that for years. You wasn't there when we were sleeping together. I don't think she have anything to do with it. So you're basically blaming. Okay, so apparently Miss Allen and Mr. Childs met each other through mutual friends, and uh, she didn't stop till she ground his pelvis down into dust. You know what I'm saying? Cause uh, they got involved. Although Miss Allen said it was nothing serious, and they were just messing about. She was friends with cousins of mine, and. We got together like that. We end up messing around or whatever. You have mutual <laughs> friends. You start having sex. Well, obviously actually, unprotected. Actually it started like this. Okay, Miss Allen claims that when she found out that she was preggers, she told Mr. Childs that there was a possibility that he could be the father of the broodling growing in her tum tum, or that he might not be. She was kind of upfront about it though, so respect there. Miss Allen, what is your contention. I, I told him, I said, she may be your child. I told him, I said, it's a possibility that she may so not be So you said yours. it is a possibility it, that she may not be yours. Exactly. This keeps getting more interesting though. Miss Allen said that Mr. Child's wife, Miss Johnson, was always following her up and down and causing drama. Miss Johnson, however, disses her back. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what she got to say, too. I hope this turns into a cat fight. I got popcorn. Uh, up and down the road, she following me. I can't she remember me chasing her up and down the street, but she can't remember who fathered her child. But she can't remember who fathered but her child. Furthermore, you honor, he's always girl, been there for girl, my please. children. Oh, well, damn. Apparently, Miss Baylor told Mr. Childs and his wife that Miss Allen had already gotten a DNA test done with another man before she decided to test Mr. Childs. Miss Allen agreed to having another man tested, but then says she wasn't messing with him. Like, okay, yeah, all right. If you weren't bouncing on that yoga ball, then why get a DNA test? Just saying. Hey, I think it's important to know too. Well, when we met her the daughter, the, the daughter told us that she had tested someone else. Why didn't you test him first? Testimony 
which indicates that you also tested another man. Yeah, she did. Is that, that true? Okay, that is. Okay, you know what? That that's just either uh, either weird or just savagely creepy. A man just wouldn't approach your kid and tell her that he believes he's her father and would like to get a DNA test done if you haven't already been doing the dirty with him. I'd like to think that no man would do that. Yeah, a dude walking up to a woman with a baby being like, hey, you want another one? Disrespectful as all hell. That I could see. But this, that's a different story. Oh, and asked me, and he said, you know, I was messing with your mom around the time. I wanted I wanted to get a DNA test with you. Okay, someone reached out to you, yes. Ms. Baylor, and said, I think I may be your father, and I want to have a test. Mr. Childs seems like a good father and a you know, kind of a good person generally. After all, he didn't deny her when she hit him up on Facebook and said, you might be my papa. I'm on Facebook, hit him up, and I said, look, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I do actually want to know. And did, did I ever once deny you? Nah, you never did. Never once, never once. A child looking for a father, Yana, and I stand a chance of being- I can actually understand where he's coming from here. Apparently, he met Miss Baylor when she was nine, but she doesn't remember. He says Miss Allen should have approached him years ago, and this would have been taken care of. Well, he's not wrong there. In touch with Miss Baylor. I, and I told her that I wanted to meet Shy. 11 I, years ago, you would have been nine, Miss Baylor. Yes, yes. ma'am. So you made an attempt yes, to meet Miss yes, Baylor at nine years old. Yes, ma'am. But you weren't informed. Mr. Childs is dropping some wisdom right here. And Miss Allen, unfortunately, she's spreading the doo doo. If the kid was really her priority, it wouldn't have mattered whether or not Mr. Childs was messing with other people. That's got nothing to do with the kid. All that stuff. So Again. that's why I just went on about my business. What does that have to do with the child at hand, Your Honor? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, exactly. but at the same time... That's what I'm saying if, if I've been we... going through, Your Honor. All right, my lovelies, time to find out what the results say. Are not the father. I'm very sorry, Miss Baylor. It's okay, Your Honor. You know, at the same time. <laughs> Me and another time where I feel bad for her. I was really hoping that he was actually the dad, but at least it's a good thing that everyone knows now and can move on with life. Mr. Childs, though, solid person. Props to him. Oh, Miss Allen, you gotta be more truthful to your kid and get her the answer she needs about who her dad is. Kids have a right to know, man. I'm just saying. Okie dokie. Here we go. A man is at court to find out if the kid he had with his ex-wife is really his biological kid. So check this out. You yeah. claim your wife, Ms. Burns, cheated on you with the man standing next to her after only three months of marriage. Yes, Your Honor. Wait, what? She was going back and forth between two men, like, you know, <laughs> paddle ball? And would only be with one man when she was mad at the other? Okay, this went on even after they were divorced. Why was Mr. Powell still accepting her even after they got divorced? Well, I have my suspicions, but here's why. We'd get into an argument, she would leave me and go be with another person. If she got upset with that person, she would do the exact same thing, come back to me and sleep with me. Now, how long did this go on for? For about a year. Well, that was sudden. Miss Burns said she left Mr. Powell because he had no stable job and all the burden was on her to take care of the baby plus her three other kids. Ooh, but Mr. Powell cuts her off and cuts her down at the knee, saying that it's her mother that takes care of the kids because she ain't got no job either. Mr. Powell has had a job and then he'd lose his job. Then he had a job and then he'd lose his job. I figured everything was put off on me. I have three other children other than the baby that I provide for. Okay, this is kind of unbelievable. So it appears that Mr. Jones and Ms. Burns had a little bit of aggressive cuddling during her marriage to Mr. Powell. She said it happened after Ms. Jones took a DNA test to determine if one of Ms. Burns' three kids is his. Also, she told Mr. Jones that she and Mr. Powell were getting a divorce, although Mr. Powell denies this. I went back to LaPelle that night to hang out with Mr. Jones and... What? Yes, Two days, Your Honor. For two days? Yes. And she took, all of, she took all of her things 
and went and lived with me. Mr. Powell says there's a possibility that Ms. Burns is lying about her date of conception because he was still washing his winky in her kitchen sinky after they were separated. What did Mr. Powell say when you told him? He didn't really say anything. During the time of conception, you were still having sex? I don't know if she is lying about the date of conception or not. It's just, it's just crazy for your woman to be pregnant and for you to be excited and worried at the same time because she was having an affair with someone else, which meant that the kid might not even be yours. Oh, it's sad. And excited? Did you think, oh my goodness, this could possibly be my child? What I, did you think? I did. I, I was excited. Uh, but also at the same time, I was kind of worried because I knew that she did have an affair with Mr. Jones. Wow. So he's still giving her a nickel to take his pickle? <laughs> Yikes. I'm just kind of speechless at this point. My mother was. I was never called, Your Honor. You I never got I, a call. I, I never got a call. I never got a text. I ain't nothing. We're still having no. sex, Your Honor. All this time? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Even to this day. What? Holy shiz balls. Okay, Mr. Bell's definitely not here to play. Okay, dude bro apparently took a lie detector test and brought the results to court to prove that his ex-wife is lying about them no longer having sex to this day. I am so ready for this. By the way, have I said it yet? I'm loving the energy from Mr. Jones. Sleeping with Mr. Powell? No, Your Honor. Your Honor, I have, I have proof. What proof do you have? Your Honor, I took a lie detector test. To you te took a lie detector test? To show you that I'm not lying and that I'm telling the truth. I love the support that the two men are giving to each other. They're both heartbroken that they've been played by Ms. Burns and they both just want the truth so they can move on. Very reputable. Oh, you're hit, we'll see. The question not you yet, were but... asked was as follows. Are you lying? This is both funny and wholesome at the same time. He didn't even hesitate to stand beside Mr. Powell. Both men seem like really good guys that have just been played by a really crappy woman. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to hear the results. I have never met. We have never met. Well, I was gonna say, before I read the results, you're welcome to stand on this side with him because it sounds like now. <laughs> That's, that's just sad. I feel bad for Mr. Powell. Like, he's a really good guy who just made the mistake of loving the wrong woman. Honestly, I hope he can move on from this because he deserves way better than what he got. Mr. Jones, you are his father. Sorry, man, I was rooting for you. Ms. Burns is a nasty piece of work. Like, she needs to learn to be accountable for her actions. Lying, especially in this kind of a circumstance, is just a horrible human thing to do. Both these guys can do better, and they should. Hey, exactly. Yeah, he got a need since we here. He don't remember none of this, huh? Do you eight months old, beautiful baby. You supposed to be happy and buying little toys. And every time he goes, I, I lose a part of my soul. A man rejects his childhood friend's seven month old son and claims one of his friends is the biological father. He says she's promiscuous and what they had was only a casual fling. I met him in elementary school, we was friends. I kind of moved away after a while. We was close friends, but you know, we never kept in touch because we were so young. And one day after some years, just years of being apart. I was at my friend house, or well, I was at her boyfriend's house, and we were... They talked and caught up, and then they went back to her friend's place with her boyfriend. They slept together that day. They left her friend's house and went back to his house, and they slept together a couple of times. After that, they repeatedly hung out and did the same thing, and it went on for about a month until she found out he had a girlfriend. That was when they stopped talking. I did not have no idea that he had a girlfriend. He told me about a girl that he had talked to, but he stopped Just talking to her. When I walked into that house, she was at one of my friends' house. And when I walked in, she was already- She denied being hung up with anybody or on anybody's lap. Mr. Stone stated that he had used protection while they were at her friend's house. And also when they later went to his house. She agreed with him and also mentioned that they didn't always use protection every time they slept together. According to Mr. Stone, they used protection just one time. And that one time was a threesome. We had a threesome. The night I found out that he had a girlfriend, we had a threesome. Uh, Jerome, at first I thought he said in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> then I realized he said in a threesome. I don't know which one caught me by surprise. He used protection with her, but not in a threesome? How logical of him. What he says next got me perplexed. It appears that the other girl included in the threesome was his girlfriend. Oh well, it was well thought out. Miss Rogers stated that she wasn't aware until that night. According to her, if she knew he had a girl, she wouldn't have kept sleeping with him. When I was talking to him, it was just me and him, and we was never together. We was never in a relationship. It was just friends having sex. That's it. His other friend, I knew him about what? the same time as I long known him. He just don't know that. He does not know how I know these people, but he keeps trying to make assumptions. He had told his friend that he knew Miss Rogers for a while and he asked him to talk to her, and his friend replied telling him all what they had done together, including the fact that they had slept together three days before that day. He also mentioned that when she told him she was pregnant, she had slept with his friend twice. She disagreed with all he had said, saying she never slept with anybody while she was sleeping with him. I the doctor to get my birth control shot because I know I'm having sex, so I'm like, I need to go because I don't want to have no more kids. Anymore. I have twins. 18 years old with three children? That is a whole lot of responsibility for an 18-year-old. It was too late at the time she thought to put a cap on it, as she was already pregnant. She was very scared, so she called him and told him she was pregnant. Mr. Stone countered her, saying they never had a conversation, but he went further to explain his own side of the story. Day, I was in the car with one of my friends. They pulled up on me, and he said he had to go pick his girl up and her, which is her best her best friend. We get to them, we drop them off at the hospital. Magic, I don't know what we're doing. She have not said nothing matter. We Dog. did drop her off at the hospital. I did not know, not one How thing. is he dropping her off at the hospital, but not asking her why she's at the hospital? That doesn't even make sense. She stated that she had seen pictures of the ultrasound, but he denied it. She told the court that he didn't know she was pregnant until she was four months old, so she couldn't really fault him for not knowing earlier. I went to that ultrasound and I thought I was having a boy, and that lady told me when my baby was conceived. Okay. So at your ultrasound, you got the date. He believes the dates do not add up. Miss Rogers explained that she was told she got pregnant during the beginning of November, which was when she was intimate with Mr. Stone. He disagreed with her date, and they both went loggerheads arguing about the dates. She brought a calendar showing her proving her dates were right. Baby Christian was born on August 25th. I went my whole, I went over my due date because Christian was a very big baby, and my body mm. wasn't trying to get Definitely him to come hear about out. that one either. Mr. Stone admitted being intimate with her in November, but I'm quite confused why he's so convinced he can't be the father if the dates fall right within the window of conception identified by doctors miss rogers states that he called the baby his and she has text messages proving this from mr stone what are you doing and you say sitting here and mr stone says oh okay i miss nugget you write okay and then you write back mr stone when can i have my baby at this time he was already attached to the baby and he said that he had told her that because he grew up without a father and with the situation on ground he might grow up without a father Father, and he didn't want that, so he tried to step up and be a man about the situation. I did like she tell did him. everything on me. I until did. The baby was born. I did tell him that I don't fault him for how he feels, but he has not came to me since my baby had been born, really saying that he really felt like this wasn't his baby. His family has come over to hers and told her that the child looked like him. She told the court that she had told him she was pregnant on the phone, but he had stated he had heard it from someone else. They've been moving from one argument to another. I don't think they've agreed on one thing, and that's not a good thing. It's time for the result. Rogers versus Stone. When it comes to seven month old Christian, Rogers. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Stone, you are not the father. I told you I got lied about nothing. I know what I did. I paid for extra. It appears that she knows who the father is, but conforming to what she said, he doesn't want anything to do with her. She needs a friend that could be there for her, and he sure could be that. Rumors and incriminating evidence lead a man to question the paternity of his fiance's nine-month-old son. He refuses to move ahead with their plans to legally wed until he's proven to be the biological father. Because, like she said, we got married, but I just, I couldn't go through with it because there's too many trust issues. And I feel like if you don't have trust, you can't go forward with the relationship, and I don't believe he's mine. They're basically living in not just a legal limbo, but also a love limbo. They met on Tinder. He was swiping through and he saw her profile. He super liked her on Tinder, and she in return liked him back, and they connected. They were supposed to hang out the first night, but she declined because she was with someone else she met on Tinder. The second night is when we actually hung out 
She came over, um, we had some drinks, one thing led to another, and we had sex the first night. The first night you met? That's definitely a super swipe. They slept together unprotected. I'm curious to what exactly made her sleep with the first night. I mean, did she like him that much? She explained that he was nice and handsome, but she also mentioned that alcohol was a contributor. I that we were exclusive, but me and her had two different ideas of what talking is. To me, talking is- According to her, talking meant nothing to her because there were no ground rules. He believes this was where a lot of trust issues came from. He showed his friend a picture of her because he was hyped and then showed him a video of her. She's at a bar giving somebody else her number, it looks like. Nope. So it just started to form like issues nope. with trust. If she slept with me the first night that we met, then what would, what would, I mean, she probably could have slept with him the first night. Well, I wouldn't jump to conclusions if I were him. He stated that he had talked to her about it, but she kept the same attitude. She didn't feel guilty about it because she didn't think it was wrong. Situation where I'm out with my friends and another guy who I've just seen around, I don't really know him personally, he stops me and he's like, hey man, are you talking to Gabby? And he goes, you should be careful, man. I heard she messes with a lot of dudes and I'm like, what? That's strange to me. Considering they met and messed around too, it sounded like true information. She affirmed that there were people she was swiping through, matching with, and having conversations with. I wonder if he ever caught her red-handed, or if it was just hearsay. Grocery store, and um, we came back, so I go to the trunk to get the groceries or whatever, and I find men's boxers in the trunk. <laughs> Now, I know for sure these aren't mine. I'm like, whose are these? These are not mine. Oh, wow. Miss Satchel is up to something, and we are about to find out. He brought the boxers to court. That was not the evidence I was expecting. She told the court that they were in the trunk because she had done laundry in her family member's house. And he also added there was a couple of other things, like socks and so on, coupled with the boxers. We to Vegas for my birthday. And on that trip is when we had sex again, unprotected. And I know for a fact that I conceived October 20th. That's my birthday. He explained that a friend of his had seen her on October 15th at a bar talking to someone else. And he has a statement from his friend proving this. He also believes this was the night the baby was conceived. Back around October showed me a girl he met and was starting to talk to on Tinder back when I was in California. But like mid-October, I was at a bar club and I saw I saw her there talking to another guy, feeling on him. He recorded it and sent a snap of her giving another guy her number. The only way to figure this out is to get the conception calendar. According to the calendar, the day his friend saw her at the bar was exactly the conception day. This case just got interesting. I was going to go out with my friend. She didn't want me to. I went out anyways. The next day we had a talk and she was upset and she was like, well, you don't need to come to the hospital because he's not yours. It just keeps getting worse. That was not the bell she should have rung. In her defense, she knows the things to say to get under his skin. And in those moments of tension, she was just trying to hurt and upset him. There are other ways of getting back at a partner, but she decided to go too far. She really just put the needle on the haystack with that. And you know, I've been consistent. He signed the birth certificate. He was there through the pregnancy. Never again did I mention anything like that because that was a mistake and because that's not true. He affirmed that he had signed the birth certificate. He loves her and he wants a family and the whole lifestyle but he turns out not to be his, he doesn't see himself moving forward without having the trust issues in the way. If he was going to marry her or even believe the child was his, why sign the birth certificate? It doesn't add up. You on the birth certificate. So you might not have the family, but you gonna have the financial obligation of that child support. I think we've heard enough testimonies. It's time for the results. Of Terman versus Sanchez. When it comes to nine month old Jordan Terman. Mr. Terman, you are the father. <laughs> they obviously love each other. They really just want to work on themselves and the trust issues they have. A woman learns that a man who raised her may not actually be her biological father. He spent years in jail for unpaid child support and his life had been turned upside down. We was at a family dinner and we was all just discussing how our parents was and then family members started saying that, well, you don't know if he's your dad or not because you don't look like your dad and he might not be your dad. She went to another family and asked if what she was told was true, but she was told it was not the right time or 
place to talk about it, and just shrugged it off. She called her father and asked him about it, but he had told her that the other guy was around at the time and started questioning it. You actually have a court date tomorrow. 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. Concerning the child support for this young woman that you're still behind on. He could be thrown back in jail for being behind, and he still doesn't know if he's her biological father. That's just sad. It appears that he has never actually been arrested for anything besides the child support issue. Just like that, a clean record got destroyed. And it back months. They're like, wait a minute, there's a month or two here that I wasn't even down there and she's supposed to be pregnant at this time. You started doing some math and you felt like it didn't add up. Yes, ma'am. Well he concluded that the window of conception was around that time, and he thought the child might and might not be his. After he learned her mother was pregnant, he went on to get married and signed the birth certificate, and he stepped up to be a father. When her separated, I was told by friends of mine that they had slept with her and other guy, other people. Wow. He doesn't believe Miss Lapine looks like him, but believes his other daughters look very much like him. His other daughter, Miss Jennifer, is in court, and she told the court that she grew up believing Miss Lapine was her sister. She stated that they were always teased about not being sisters. It's just things like, oh, well, you're the milkman's baby, you know, stuff like that. It's just been, you know, after so many years, you think something, and then it comes out, and then you see it affect everybody. It's not just me and her, you know, it's our kids, it's, you know, everybody around us. It's our whole family. That's just really pretty sad. She brought a picture of her and her sister with their dad, which they took last week. She feels she strongly looks like her father, but she doesn't think Miss Lapine looks like him. Miss Lapine believes she got her mother's side of the jeans, and she's always thought she looks like her mom, but had her dad's attitude. Well, I've been paying child support. Yeah. I'd go to the courthouse and pay. Jerome, please pass me that evidence. I would have it taken out of my paychecks and everything else. I would go to the courthouse and make them take it out of my paychecks all the time. They go back. Record 19. after record. She questioned where he was when he went to jail. He had replied to her saying he had left for 10 years because he and her mother broke up. He came home one day. Her mother came into where he was sitting and told him she wanted him to move out. He packed his things and moved out. Miss Lapine was three years old at the time. Mr. Lapine, you have regret. Yes, ma'am. Because you feel like you let your daughters down? I did let them down. And I'm sorry. I wish I'd never left. I wouldn't worry about what their mom had to say. He also wouldn't have met Miss Opfer, who has been there with him through thick and thin. Miss Opfer is his wife, and she is in court. She explained that it's been hard, as every time he went to jail, the girls do not only lose their father, but so did her four children. She also fears he's going to go back to jail if he turns out not to be Miss Lapine's father. When they take my child support out, I only get $600 a month after that. That's it. So they're taking for your arrears. Yes, ma'am. I feel so sorry for Miss Lapine. This is a lot to handle. She told the court that she has tried to look for the man named Bill that she was told was her father. But it appears that there are 239 people out there from pretty much every state in the United States. Pennsylvania, eight in Tennessee, three in Washington, 13 in North Carolina. And you're trying to look for your potential biological father with these types of odds. Yes, because and then I'm I getting married soon and I just want to know who my real dad is. She told Mr. Lapine that she felt upset he wasn't there for her all those years, even though she really loves him. She believes he did more for her siblings than her. I was gone was my mistake. Because after 10 years, I missed out of you guys' life. <clears throat> that, look at that, that was my mistake. Miss Jennifer also questioned why he was never there. She also told Miss Ofer that she loves her children, but she's jealous of them because her dad raised them but not her. He wasn't there for her, but he was there for them. Miss Jennifer has also requested that a paternity be done on her behalf to make sure Mr. Lapine is her father, just to support her sister. It's time for the results. In the case of Lapine versus Lapine, when it comes to Jennifer Lapine, Mr. Richard Lapine, you are her father. Let's find out if Miss Lapine is his biological daughter. Lapine versus Lapine. As it pertains to the paternity of Miss Brandy Lapine. Miss Lapine, Mr. Richard Lapine is not your biological father.